This is Miss Scott coming to you for a video on the law of conservation of mass. We will talk about what that is and how that helps us when we're balancing simple chemical equations. So let's start off with talking about what this law actually means and what we can interpret it as. What this law of conservation of mass basically says is that you can't create matter and you can't destroy matter. So matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be rearranged. So I can change it into something into a different form. I can't magically get rid of it or magically make it. All right. In simple terms, what that means is the number of atoms in a reaction that you have before, so what goes into a reaction, is going to be equal to the number of atoms that come out of that reaction or come after the reaction. All right, so I won't get rid of atoms. I won't have unaccounted for atoms. They'll all be present and accounted for. All right. So how we do that, how we show this law of conservation of mass, is through balancing equations. All right. Some equations, when you write them, when you write out the formulas, and you say I have this ingredient turns into these products, it doesn't always account for every atom that's there. So I'll give you an example. The decomposition of water. So decomposition is breaking down. I have H2O yields H2 plus O2. All right, and that might seem all fine and dandy because we have H's and O's and that's all good, yay. But if I were to draw a picture of what this looks like, each water, I'm gonna use blue for hydrogen, pink for oxygen, There's one molecule of water. One molecule contain containing two hydrogens. And one molecule of diatomic oxygen. So if I look, I have two hydrogens before and two hydrogens after, so that's all good. But I have one oxygen over here and only and two over here, which is a problem. I don't know where this other oxygen came from, so I need to account for him. So what I will do is I will go back and I will start to balance. The only way I can balance is by changing the coefficients of the numbers that I put into the reaction. And the coefficients are the numbers that go before the compound or the element. And that basically tells you the number of pieces you have of that compound or element. So I need another water over here. So I'll add another oxygen. I couldn't add just an oxygen by itself because that's not in this formula anywhere. I can't just add them in like that. So I can only add more pictures that I already have. So I will add another water. So another water with a, which has one oxygen and two more hydrogens, two waters. So now my oxygens are all accounted for, but what did I do? Now I've added too many hydrogens. And again, I can't just get rid of them and pretend they were never there. I have to go to the other side and balance it again, which I will do. So I can't add just single hydrogens. I have to make sure that I follow the pictures I already have. So I will draw another compound of H2. And now I go back and I count my atoms. I have one, two, three, four hydrogens after. One, two, three, four hydrogens there. Two oxygens before and two oxygens after. So this is balanced. And to make sure you are able to communicate this, that it is balanced, you write the coefficients for everything. I have two pictures of H2. So I would put a two in front of that. O2, O2 is one picture. I don't have any other pictures of them. I only have one. So that would be my coefficient there. All right, let me give you one to try at home. I want you to balance the synthesis of potassium bromide. So K plus Br2 yields KBR, pause the video, and unpause it when you're ready to go over this. All right, 
so hopefully you've done a little bit of work and you have mastered this concept or at least gotten some practice with it so where do we start I start with drawing pictures of everything I'm gonna use pink for potassium and blue for bromide so K that's just one atom of potassium plus a Br2 this too tells me that in one picture I need two atoms of that. That's what that means. That will yield a K PR. All right, so this is clearly not balanced as it is. You probably figured that out if you're able to draw the pictures. I have two bromines over here and only one over here. So that's a problem. So I would need to add another picture of bromine. And again, I can't just add bromine just by itself because there's no single bromine over here. I have to follow what's here. So I draw another picture that matches what I already have. So now I have two bromines and two bromines, so that's all, all fine and dandy. But what have I done? I have two potassiums and only one over here. So I just go back to the other side and I add as many potassiums as I need. In this case, I need one more picture of it. Go through what coefficients did you use? What coefficients are needed here? I have two pictures of potassium, so a coefficient of two. I have only one picture of this diatomic bromine, so a coefficient of one. And on my product side, I have two sets or two pictures of potassium bromide, so a coefficient of two. If you go online, there's lots of great resources where you can check your work. They are, lots of educators have put on, put resources online for balancing equations, much like this. Some of them get really, really complex, but a lot of them are about this level where you have maybe three or four, two to three elements. So go practice. If you have questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.